Welcome, welcome, welcome to the European Podcast Belgium. It is um, a second recording before I say to everybody hello. So um, we, we try to do it again good because the first recording doesn't work very well. But now, so welcome to everybody again with me, Patrick. And um, our special guest for Belgium, Justina. Hello, Justina. Um, hello. Thank you very much to, to doing this with um, us. And um, yeah. again, my words to Patrick. And then finally, we open and um, introduce by yourself from Justina. So, Patrick. Thank you, Lars. Um, yes, in this episode, we will talk with Justina. Justina is a detailer from Belgium. Uh, she has a lot of experience in the industry. Uh, she's been in the detailing industry for God knows how long, but she will tell us that, how long she's been into detailing. So, yes, uh, thank you very much for being on the show with us. It's, uh, it's awesome. And um, maybe we can let you give a short introduction about yourself. Who is Justina? Uh, how she got into detailing? And uh, why is she not selling shoes? <laughs> oh, oh. oh, yes. Uh, Welcome, Mr. Sowie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm here. I'm a, I'm a detailer, yes. Now, uh, 25 years. It started uh, in 19, 19, 1995. In January, then I celebrate now 25 years. Uh, I don't know why, don't ask me why I started with detailing. It was just, just something. And still, I still do it. I still uh, uh, love it. And I, and I hope I can do it for many years. Uh, I'm, actually, I'm born in Poland. In uh, 1993, I moved to Belgium. And short after, I started detailing. And I'm still on the same place in Antwerp City. Uh, I don't know how many cars I, I detailed in my life and boats and, uh, and whatever. Uh, sometimes I'm thinking, what I'm doing? Why I don't sell shoes? <laughs> Why I'm not normal? Uh, when, you are, when you are tired, like, like yesterday, and it's like, oh, fuck, what? I, I, I like to have a normal job. But in the end, uh, no, I like it. And since uh, two years, I get the trainings, and this make more and more uh, interesting. And uh, I tra my traveling, my my guys that I meet, uh, can, I was yesterday talking with uh, with one of them, and I said this is so much more than just money. Uh, you mean yes? Yeah. yeah. So much more, the experience, the, the people, the, the everything what I what I saw, the cities, the countries, the, uh, different countries. Uh, um, everywhere is detailing growing. Last five years, I think. Uh, everywhere is something uh, more than just detailing, and I hope also in Belgium. Be, uh, because because you you're mentioning that you travel a lot. Um, uh, we know you uh, because. Lars and I travel a lot either, uh, also. Yeah. So um, we meet each other on different places. Yeah. And it's not always in the area because if we look at it, we only live a few hours from each yeah. other. But I think the first time we really met was in Las Vegas or at Wackstock uh, yes. or other places, you know. So um, we meet on the other side of the world, um, although we live near to each other. So but you travel a, a, a lot and... Um, the reason for your traveling is training or is it uh, uh, getting knowledge or more experience in the detailing industry? What's the reason for your travels? Uh, many things. Uh, yes, of course, uh, I, 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 I get more experience. You live on every, every day, every training, but yeah, I give trainings. And uh, this was five years ago, impossible for me. So I was like, can I do this? Can I, can I get something for people? Can I... They learn something from me if they want to learn something from me. And now, now it's like, okay, I, I like this. I like this. But I, it is not a uh, thing that I say, okay, I just like uh, give the trainings. I still work in my, in my studio. I need this. I need this for my mind. I, I need this to be alone, to, to, to detail the cars. It's still the first job. 
That is very interesting, of course, because and a lot of detailers, um, uh, they don't think about sharing knowledge. Uh, but since you have already, you already have 25 years experience in the business, in the industry. So you've seen many brands, many machines, many uh, stuff and, 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 and uh, methods that you can work paint or leather or whatever interior. Uh, so it makes sense to me that you are sharing the knowledge and that people gather the knowledge from you. So it makes sense to me that you start uh, doing the trainings as well. Yeah, and this, uh, uh, I give them, uh, uh, of course, my experience. I, I'm not a world champion. I just have some experience. Uh, and I try to, to share. And you can sometimes you can make it difficult or you can make difficult things easier. True. That is what I'm trying to, to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Make, make the life easier. Yeah. But this is um, when you say um, you are not a champion. So, but with 25 years experience, you for sure on a, on a really high level. That is um, no question about it. But um, what I think also is, um, you know, um, I do also a lot of trainings, and I learn also a lot from my students. Yeah. And um, this, um, to come together to to, to talk about. Um, the same things, um, talking about the techniques, and 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 also when I when I speak to to, to, to companies who do more and less the same products, what we do, um, this is something what I always enjoy. I'm not scary about it. I enjoy this because this knowledge sharing just by talking about it um, is is um, something what um, you will bring always a bit forward. So, um, um, but this. Um, it's a both side thing for training also, no? So um, your 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 workshop um, is it something what you run completely by your own, or do you have help, or how is this organization? Or is it something what you the JB detailing is just for yourself? What is um, how does it work? The JB is just for myself. Uh, I'm the owner. Uh, I don't have employers. It's just I have uh, uh, some friends. Of I, I call this a GB team, <laughs> uh, and they come to to help me. Yes, yes, of course I have now. And this, 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 this was what I start to do uh, with trainings. Is then I can make a group and team, yeah, uh, and we can work together. Yeah, and that's uh, a, that's a good thing. So that's what you try. So yeah. you try the people that you train. And you have like an assignment or a job uh, which is too big for you and to do by yourself. You can you share, you can work together. That is awesome. That is really yeah. awesome. And these guys among each other, they help each other out as well? Um, not, not, not yet, but this is what I like to change in this world. Uh, why? Because of most of detailers in all this work alone. Mm-hmm. And like yesterday, one of uh, uh, the guys came to uh, visit me. That's what I'm saying. I'm also, after the training, I'm there. Uh, uh, he stood here to two nights, uh, it was two in a night. <laughs> but okay, okay, nothing happened. And uh, it's okay, we, we make the plan and we can help together. Because some jobs I don't like, but he like it. And jobs so he don't like. Him. Yes, I like it. Then you can you can share and you can work together. It makes sense, I I, I think. And like now uh, Vasco, if I have too much work and, and I can call him, I say okay, I I'm there for some days. It make my life also easier. Yeah, because he's an experienced detailer as well as we know. So um, it's good for you to know that if you ring somebody. Um, and, and ask them to help you out, you don't have to watch them all day because otherwise you would like have one and a half job, you know? Yeah. So that's a good thing, yeah. Okay, so before we start to talk a little bit more maybe um, about the detailing scene or industry in, in Belgium, we have to figure out what it is. Is this a scene or industry? Um, let us know when you, when you talk about training. So maybe I'm interested to do a training um, at your place um, what I have to do, um, how I can get um, a place um, in your training class? Well, it is, it is easier because I, I try to be flexible also. They can uh, uh, make the choice with, with one person, two person. Okay, and the price is different, uh, but 
for me, uh, one-one training is the best one. Yeah. And how I get uh, contact? I can, I can, I can edit you on Facebook and write you, and um, I'm interested. Yes, yes, yes. And you can, uh, yes. Can do yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's a way, and then figure out the date, figure out what 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 the people want, what they not want. So because I'm I'm sure after after when we launch this, or when the podcast is live and the people more people get knowing about that you offer training, um, will get, um, the people will ask um, how can I can I place my training? Um, are you are you traveling to uh, a place and do training there as well? No? So um, yeah, you care for the traveling cost um, as well. Yeah. I guess, and, um, you are you yeah. are fine to traveling. Um, of yeah, course. because of course now now we are uh, we start to uh, to make the training in As Iceland Iceland. Iceland yeah. Then it's uh, simple. Uh, I go there and I make the training. Uh, they like also have uh, what I told you about this leather training. We do the one day uh, flex and one day leather training. And okay, he he uh, the organization is there. I do, mm -hmm. I do just the training. When I do training in my, in my place, yeah, it's different when, when everything is, is here. Yeah, of course. Makes sense. Yeah. But for them, for them, often it's cheaper to have you come over there, do yeah, the training there, sure. than the other way around, have multiple people travel to Belgium. Yeah. And yeah. the skills, the level of education that you do. So if I am, I'm a butcher today, but I'm interested in detailing because I love cars, can I come and and is it a training? Yes, yes, of course. You, you can do it uh, like uh, one training in, in Hungary. Some guys, they are uh, yeah, the beginners. Mm -hmm. And after, after the training, they start to be super interesting. And they say, can we come over to Belgium for private training? I and see. that's what sometimes happens. In a group training, and they uh, after can, can uh, enjoy uh, uh, private training. Okay. okay, so if somebody thinks about becoming a detailer, they yeah. can visit one of your trainings and you will help them start at the basics. Yeah, yes, of course. Okay. Because when you have a group from 30 or 40 people, it cannot be for everybody. I, I, I try, but it is impossible. We know, we know a, a large group is difficult, especially if you have a lot of questions. Uh, then time is traveling so fast that you yes. think, okay, I wanted to tell and teach so much more than we able to do now uh, so yes we prefer smaller groups as well for the people later is not so big so i have this experience you know when i do um, training in the car industry um i i have this really regular i say maximum four people in yeah. germany and sometimes okay when i when, when the traveling cost is very high and then i agree to six people yeah um, so, for example, in, when I do a training in BMW plant in, in, in South Carolina, so with flying costs and everything, um, I say, okay, BMW, it's fine, but six people, um, but this is really normally the maximum. But what I really often have is, especially outside of Germany, in, in Germany, it's still fine when I do a training, the people follow the rules and have four people, but... Um, I have it very, very often that I come there and there's a group of 8, 12, 14 people because they hear inside of the plant, they hear, ah, oh, there's a leather repair training or a leather vinyl repair training. Oh, that is also maybe interesting for my area. So I sent a guy and then this one, I sent also a guy and then I come there and uh, I had once in the US, um, I um, did a second training, so I did a first training and few months later a second training because other areas was also interested about it and um, so I, I came in this uh, in this room was normally planned and the guy said no we don't do it uh, we don't do it here we have uh, a, a few people more no? and I say okay but you know it's coming harder when it's more than six people no? yeah ah, okay <laughs> And then I noticed already maybe a bit more and then I came uh, when I walk around the corner I said no you can't do this. It was 29 people. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this part. Huh? This is hard. Yeah. After 
Training. How to how to train 29 people? This is um, not possible. I mean, what we did then was um, I say, okay, I did already before a training, yeah, and I remember this guy, this guy, and this woman, yeah. Are they here? No, and uh, are they available? And then I um, asked that they can assist me on the training. So what we did then was um, I split it in a theory part, and then we did groups. Yeah. Okay. The people who were starting, but the, the effect is not the same. The effect is not the same. It's better for people maximum. I mean, one-to-one um, uh, uh, -one training is the most effective training, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, <laughs> always funny. And I guess when you travel, you have um, a similar experience. I mean, you was also in China by Flex, no? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it was, uh... <laughs> you know what's going on in other countries sometimes. It is um, just uh, blowing, no? so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is about uh, make the uh, selfies and, and uh, movies, and this is different. But okay, after uh, such uh, trainings, uh, people can individual uh, contact me, and this is what happened. Sometimes, yeah. because they, I call this more uh, demo days. But I get a lot of compliments because I didn't know, and now uh, I work super easy after this training. It makes me happy, of course. Yeah, yeah. But it cannot train so many people. Demo days is also a good thing, for, especially for beginners, that, yeah. they, uh, that they get an idea um, in, which, in which direction this goes. So that is also a good thing. Okay, so um, that is. Training, how to contact you, um, cool that you, that, you um, that you offer something like this. Um, you do low advertising about it, so I guess you have enough um, guys who want to come for training. Um, what is about um, detailing in Belgium? How big is Belgium? So how many people live there? Is there a detailing scene? Is it something what is normal? Do a normal guy bring his car to a detail? Is it something what is normal or is it like in Germany that is more autopflege and um, the difference between detailing and the car washing or welded is not um, noticed by normal people? How is uh, yeah, how big is Belgium? Start with this and how big well, is Belgium, uh, um, maybe not so many people know, but it's a small, small uh, country with I think, I think 10 millions. We, we have two languages that make more difficult, more more uh, difficult, because you have a two sizes all Belgium. Now from one year, I have more contact with the other side. We call this other side, a French side. Mm -hmm. uh, we start the IDA group, uh, French uh, 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 Belgium chapter, and this make this closer. I'm happy yeah. to have this. That's a good, that's a good. Program. Yeah. Yeah. So for, for training, maybe when you speak about two languages, it's maybe interesting. So you speak English, that is what we hear. You speak uh, Dutch because you live in the Dutch area of Belgium. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you speak Polish also. And what is about French? It's when somebody comes from. Uh, the French. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. But then when, when, people come from, when people came from France or from the French side, Belgian, then it makes sense that they have a little bit um, knowledge about English yeah. or even Dutch that they can. Yeah, yeah, is, yeah of, but my, make, sometimes make this difficult. Uh, but we have uh, some people that are speaking French, or when, when we make the groups training, then okay, uh, we, yeah, you need to do it because French people are speaking French. Yeah, this is what I, I just want to, to um, bring this to the point that the people know. Um, when they just speak French, they have to care for a translator or they have to, to speak English with you. But now we have a nice connection and I hope after, after Corona we can make uh, IDA a flex training uh, in, in my studio is a plan, of was a plan, still is a plan. Yeah. yeah we see what's happened. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, then we'll be Belgium more together. Okay. Which is a good thing, because because as Lars already was mentioning, uh, a lot of uh, Belgium speaking, uh, similar to Dutch, uh, Belgium speaking yeah. Belgians, they don't often speak French, you know. So and the other way around, the French speaking part 
they don't speak Dutch or Belgium. So it is good to have like a, a combination of the two where you can yeah. do like the Belgian part and they can take care of the French part. This is how you can combine the training, but bring the two together, which is together. Awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. But, uh, uh, the last year we made the one flex training with, with the guys from uh, fr uh, fr French and Belgium on the mm -hmm. side. It was super nice. It was super nice. And now we start to do something. What's happened, I, I don't have idea. I'm just trying. Uh, the industry is growing here also. Mm -hmm. And they say, yeah, okay, you give trainings and you make more and more competitors. I say, no, 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 no. I don't make competitors. I make the detailing world more uh, uh, the people can now make the promotion of this world. No, because no, no. No, no, this. It is a good Power point. Thing, but no detailing. Yeah. yeah, sorry for interrupting, but it's a good point that you are referring to the fact that you are not creating competitors. And that yeah. is where people are mistaking. You yeah. are setting a standard in the detailing industry, if you ask me. Because the more difference there is to regular uh, car cleaning and detailing, then people will start understanding, you know. So, And that's the fact. Yeah. You know that there is a difference between cleaning a car and detailing a car. That's also where the money difference is. Uh, a lot of people yeah. ask, why is detailing so, so expensive? And, and that can be like interior detailing or exterior detailing. Why is it so expensive? Because there is a lot of knowledge put in to the job. There is a lot of time that has been put into the job. And you can expect, the expectation can be high as well. You know? so, but if you have a car clean for 100, 150 euros, the expectation can't be too high, you know? So I yeah. think it's a good thing that you share knowledge and have more detailers so that people are aware this is a different industry. It is a different industry. Uh, the customers uh, uh, start to know the industry. Uh, and I don't make competitors. I said, they, we are the group, we are, we are one, we are mm -hmm. together. And then this makes for everybody a bit better life. Because I say, you, you can go to the restaurants, a uh, star restaurant and you pay 500 euro of a goal to take uh, French fries. Mm -hmm. It's a food to yeah. food, but, but it's different. But I have another example. I like I have another another example. the group, the higher, high, higher have like, you've been, You guys have been around the world. If you look for a Starbucks, there is a McDonald's and a KFC in the area close by. Yeah. There is a coffee shop close by next to a Starbucks and that works. And even the coffee shop makes as much money as the Starbucks does, you know, yeah. so they help each other. And a lot of people think if I am a detailer and yeah. my neighbor starts detailing, he will become my competitor. Yeah. No, no, no. And they are not, and they are not in a niche. We are working in a niche. Exactly. So even my, my business with leather um, cleaning and repair stuff is, is still a niche. Um, not just for cars, also for furniture and fashion and, and, and. But um, one thing is clear when um, not Anthony Bogatsky, who found this company in 1989 in New Zealand and then moved 1995, so we have also 25 celebrations this year, Oh, nice. Um, when he not starting 25 years ago, um, showing the people that it is possible to do leather repair, put paint on the top. So, you know, 25 years ago, that is something similar to, to, to the detailing, what a lot of people told me. They, they were saying 25 years ago, that's not a real job. It's not a, it's not a real handcraft thing what you are doing. You, 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 you do damage on the, on the paint and color or whatever. And, and, um, and um, also leather repair. So, you know, the point is what I want to say is when other people are also on the market and do advertising and they do good advertising and they bring it on, and, and they bring it on a level that it get accept and maybe um, I mean all this satisfied what we have to a car industry and everything that is something what we it, it build up our knowledge but it also give um, and bring this business from a unknowing niche, maybe from a dirty side to a, to a accepted um, luxury side or um, a wool coloring side with a good quality standard and then, and so I think um, it is very, very important that people who have big experience and good knowledge that they share this 
that when people come in this niche, that they are good, because this will help the whole industry to um, to yes. grow. You know what I mean? That not everybody can do without knowledge something and do mistakes and customers are unhappy and, and finally they say, but it doesn't work. Yeah? They, when you bring your car to a, to a company who polish a coating and it is, looks after a um, few weeks um, worse, then it get, a, it get a negative touch. So I think people who are 25 years in the business, they, um, you have to just to give this industry or this um, your passion that you give your passion something back um, it is necessary and give them this high high level to, to to keep it on a high level that yeah. it, um, the customer um, speak uh, positive about it so um, that is always what I say so that is why we share everything we, we really um, open that is what I know that you do this also when we met us yeah. or something we talk about it was not easy for me. It was difficult to, to, to share my, my experience. Yeah, but this is not because you don't want it, but it's just, um, I mean... It's not to, common. Yeah, to, to yeah. do a training, to stand in front of guys and um, um, talking and... I mean, um, how many people do know um, remote working or home office, how we call it in Germany? Um, um, it's a Corona time now, and how many? I, I when I switch on my camera now, uh, a lot more people are comfortable for the camera because they are used to it. You know that is the same about when you give training. You just have to do it a couple of times, and then you come used to it, and then you, you can do this. No? But I think you never had um, everything. What, what what I know from our meetings is um, you are always open to share, and that is uh, for me. Um, the, the correct way to to do this, and that is also what I like that the decom is coming up in Germany, and the uh, um, detailing show in um, France is coming up, and I hope that maybe Belgium and Netherlands can do something similar to Ezra. Um, I'm, I'm all for so yeah. Yeah, so that is um, fine. So, but you talk also about um, IDA. So um, you have IDA in in Belgium. What is I think um, the chapter is France, Belgium, no? together. France, France, Belgium. Yeah. Um, what is your part in this? Are you a certified detailer, or do you do more, or what is um, um, what is your part of this? Uh, I, I yeah, uh, I, I'm certified detailer. Of, of course, I, I did my exam. <laughs> uh, but now uh, uh, we like to to do uh, to get more people in IDA. Yeah. And uh, I will be sharing my place for for this mm -hmm. together with the flex uh, flex flex training because of location uh, I, I I'm sitting here you, you cannot see but it is a center or under Patrick no center of Antwerp and it's super easy to when you don't have traffic yeah, yeah the only uh, that's, that's what I was about to say, the only thing that can bother you is traffic. But otherwise, if you okay. take highway or you take public transportation, yeah. uh, it's or very easy. Or train yeah. or whatever, I'm in the center. Uh, it's, uh, and we have here uh, accommodations to go out in the evening or whatever. Then it is a nice location. But we have to say that, it, that you have a nice place as well, where you can have a group of people and uh, don't get too close to each other because that's something that will be coming up of course with yeah. the new regulations where you have to keep social distancing and stuff like that yeah yeah i'm back you are that's a phone call <laughs> <laughs> Flex. We have a couple more questions so um just give us a small overview of um about the detailing scene is it is it big in belgium or is it starting in compared to the us where you are for example, oh, and compared to the US, we are we are super small on this moment. I'm I'm super happy that something happened. Then I get the calls and uh, interesting people in the trainings. Not everybody is coming because it costs mm -hmm. a lot of money and all this. We we yeah we need to ask something. Uh, yeah. You, you oh, it makes sense. No, no, no. In regards to that, because this is very important. A lot of people say yeah. trainings are expensive. But you but have to keep, it is it is investment in yourself. That's the first thing. On the other hand, the trainer 
needs to be paid as well because he takes off the time to train you guys. And if it's a one-on-one -on -one training or a group training, and of course in a group, the price might vary. But I think um, if you think a training is too expensive, then don't go. The reason why you should go is pay for the training, but you pay for knowledge. It makes your world wider. It makes your knowledge wider and you get a better detail because of it. And even, and I can tell you, because I had some bad trainings as well, even a bad training, you can bump into somebody who is a very good detailer with some good knowledge and you uh, uh, create more people you know and you gain knowledge from them. So uh, I don't think there are any bad trainings if you go to the recognized trainers like yourself. No, no, Lars. Sure. So that is very important. If somebody, uh, and I'm not saying that a detailer shouldn't start a training course but at least have some experience not do it just for the money do it to share the knowledge and for somebody to gain the knowledge i think that is and i like to give them also the feeling not just the the the, the training but experience the feeling the nice feeling the home feeling mm -hmm. and it is the reason when i uh, when i say come back uh, and i'm after after training i'm still there when you need Which me, is a good thing, call yes. me and, uh, and I'm there if I have troubles. Uh, I have more a, it's more than a good thing, Patrick. It is, um, that is necessary. So, um, you, when you, you do that yourself, when you, right? Uh, yeah, we do this, of course. We have a, we have a Facebook group. Um, I'm 24 7. Um, people can contact me and I will answer. But also, we have um, good color lock centers who will answer. Burim, our um, trainer. In the, in the workshop here in, in the headquarters is um, also and different kind of ways um, the people can connect us on so Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, um, email, yeah. call. So everybody has a different um, prefer and and I use also um, Viper VP <laughs> Kakao Talk line. Oh <laughs> so um, everything what um, what the Asian area also you know Kakao Talk is from. Korea line is um, more in um, Japan, uh, Japan and so forth. However, okay, so um, um, that is very important that um, because training is always just uh, basic and um, when you go in deeper in this then you need um, somebody on your side who, 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 can, who can guide you. And, um, so um, that is um, very, very good. So I, when I look for, when, when Maybe when I'm in the situation to look for a training, I just can recommend look for uh, for people who really do this for passion, who who loves that what he yeah. is. So like you or Michael Marx in Germany, for example. Yeah, um, Michael. Yeah, he, he's also um, his plan is not to be rich or become rich. This is um, you can You know he he's plan. This is not my plan. Uh, I'm not here in this world to, to be rich. I have enough. <laughs> I, I'm happy. I can buy shoes. <laughs> you can buy enough shoes. I'm happy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, you can buy uh, shoes. You buy... I said, they how much cost it? Just shoes. <laughs> the price of the shoe. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, they think it's... For me, it's uh, don't take too much uh, and uh, money. That is not not a thing. But they have any place for for my time for for these days. Yes, of course, they they, they need to do. Uh, it's I, t I I test them all my life. They don't need to do this. Yeah. I give them this and. Uh, yeah. Yes, but you need the knowledge if you want because there's more than just holding a polishing machine, and we talked about this more often. Oh. Um, uh, are you in your training? Do you um, explain a bit about running a business, like you doing yourself, where yes, you have yes, to of course. It think is, about? It, yeah, yeah. Like yesterday, the guy was here to I think four hours, and we talk about this. See, so, yeah, we can do something together. I like to support you also. I'm a man page, and because what I'm say, I don't do these things. It's not mm -hmm. my. Uh, so, but I like to support. Yes, of course, I like to support. Uh, some of them can use my logo. If they are good enough, I don't have so much. <laughs> this, I, I think three guys said, so "Use my logo." It Can makes they use sure your logo. They they do that. Yeah, some of them they put a logo on the on the um, website. Okay, that's good. That is yeah. good. 
no, because so it will it will help grow your brand as well. So the yeah, it's well, yes, but <laughs> also for them in Belgium, people start to know Angelou. who is Jubilee, mm -hmm. who is car detailing, and that is what I what I like because it is not a real job what we talk about, yeah. and I like to say it is a real job. That is what I'm trying to do now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. make okay, it more yeah, awesome. Very good. official. So um, back to your market. Um, when I'm um, um, when I'm um, a car enthusiast and um, I I have my nice car what I love and um, I want to clean it, where I get my product? Is it some auto parts where I can go to, um, or is it mainly in online shops? And do you have a main online shops or a couple of small shops? Do you buy in Belgium or outside? So how is this situation? How I can get, I don't mean a detailer, I mean a, a normal person who normal person, yeah. want, to, want, to, want to do something, a quick detailer, bar, yeah. um, um, a tire, um, a tire cleaner, a tire cleaner, no, what is the name? I hey, a wheel cleaner, a wheel yeah. cleaner or uh, uh, iron remover, uh, wax, um, you yeah. name it. If, if you want to maintain your car, where do you buy your products? Yeah, uh, you have some of uh, popular brands uh, like uh, Maguire's. Uh, they are started, I think, uh, 20 years ago. Yeah. And it was the most popular brand in Belgium. Uh, now, uh, now we have some more. Uh, but Patrick, you know, in Belgium, we don't have super big shops. Mm -hmm. Most of them are ordered in, uh, in Netherlands. Okay, yeah. so the Belgian people buy mainly in Netherlands? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's you are good business guys in Netherlands. Yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. They are much, much. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't like to say this, but well, well, we'll take it. Now, it's not how we but see it, but we hear it. It's difficult, but business. <laughs> <laughs> well, that being said, okay, no, 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 I know my place. I know my place. No, no, no. But I, I, we hear that more often. But I think it has to do and and. Um, I think you guys know this as well because you run your own business, you know, so you need to have some kind of balls and, and have the courage to do something. A lot of people, because if I look back when I started and um, like I told, I'm a building engineer. So when I told people I was about to go and sell car care products, they were like, oh, don't do that, you know, so that market is saturated. Yeah. And if I look now, like 10, 15 years down the line, I'm like, I'm so happy that I didn't listen to them. But this is how people think. So if you have the courage, and, uh, and I think it doesn't matter if you're Dutch, Belgian, France, German, no. uh, because we can say, uh, and that's also behind you, Justina, and, and, and Color Lock is one. Because when I got into detailing, uh, we had a guy, because we were not uh, experienced enough to do leather uh, repair, you know? So we had a guy. Uh, from another part in Holland, who came over and did the leather repair for us. But he already worked with Colorlock. So that's where Colorlock already was in my life. Uh, I didn't work with Colorlock, but we knew about the brand. So that's a German brand. We have Flex behind you, which is a German brand. Um, so there are a lot of big companies in the German industry that already had the balls and are way bigger and they are on the market for so many years already. So yes, we can say about the Dutch and um, yes, we have a history in trade and um, it might look easy, but it is as difficult as for anybody else. The only thing is that you have to commit. It is a commitment. Yeah. And if you commit in Belgium, like you did, because you're doing this for 25 years, it's not because of nothing, you know, so you worked hard for this. And also for Lars, he grew the brand enormously, you know, so this guy is traveling the whole world, um, making his brand bigger and bigger every day, you know, so that is, that is awesome. That is awesome. And I like to be surrounded with people like that because they are very inspirational. Yeah, appreciate it. So, um, okay, so um, um, I, when I want to buy uh, McGuire products, I can do this online. This um, online. Some, some online. We have some some shops uh, uh, when you can buy uh, uh, on the shows. Uh, sometimes you have uh, uh, Maguire's also doing some brands. Yeah. Uh, you can buy. 
but mo most of them online. Online, we have some in Belgium, uh, some small shops. Uh, but when you have a more assortment, more products, they go to to shop online in Netherlands. Okay. Yeah. And um, how is the culture? Is it um, so? Back to to detailing. So our people. Um, what I see is a big difference from country to country, also inside of Europe, is that some countries they are more focused on waxing and then other countries are more focused on coating. So how is it in Belgium? Um, is it popular to coat or wrapping maybe a, a clear film? Is that something what you, what you have in your country? So is wrapping popular, coating, or what, what kind of, um, of all of this or is it still small and How's the situation about this? We, we talk about still small, uh, small group. Uh, uh, the waxing, the, the, all the people do as advertise for waxing. Yeah. Uh, then I start to explain what is different between wax and coating. And now uh, it starts growing. Also coating, I see this last two years, also in my shop. Uh, And this is something that has started growing. Uh, now the other protections, this is for a small, super small group. They are in Belgium, active, uh, but I think uh, what I hear and what I hear from my uh, colleagues in Netherland is it more higher. True. Mm, okay. This is what I'm, I think, I'm sure. Yeah. It is, it is, but I'm not quite sure why it is because even in, in the Netherlands we have certain areas and we can see this yeah. on a reaction on internet pages that the northern part of the Netherlands isn't as active as uh, the west coast and, and the south of Netherlands. So near the German border, we see like an area where you have the border between Netherlands and Belgium where detailing becomes very active and there are some pretty awesome details over there doing great jobs and um, yeah it would be great if uh, people start sharing as we said before their knowledge or at least get to know each other um, because it makes them stronger and bigger yes it will really help uh, yourself being a detailer and uh, I can't say it enough uh, um, but for you because how is the the car scene in Belgium do you have like car clubs or or whatever How do you gain your people that you have for detailing or how do people from the industry like Lars and myself uh, find people in the Belgium industry? Are there car scenes that, or car shows, whatever? Is there something? Yes, of course. We, we, we have a car show, all time of shows. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, of course, I'm active in some Mercedes uh, uh, clubs. Not exactly I, but my son. Uh, yeah, you have you have uh, things. Uh, um, yeah, for, for sure you have uh, nice cars and expensive cars. You can find, which as the people need to know, because when you go on the car show, the cars are clean, but it's off. They are mm -hmm. clean. When I get my car to the show, they can see and uh, this work. This yeah, was starting okay. to, to, to work mm -hmm. for my customers from Mercedes clubs. Yeah. Because a neighbor, a neighbor, a neighbor, you know, they saw my car first. It's my visit cards. It's so also told to my, uh, to my guys. So your car is your visit card. If you like or not, if you have time or not. This is your visit card. True. This is your visit card. When a customer comes, you need to show your car. So what is quoting? He likes to see, to feel, to... Uh, they like to, to, to see. Yeah, it is, it is strange if you support something like, uh, in your case, coatings. If yeah. you support coating and you don't have a coating on your car, that is kind of strange because how do you explain to your customer that you don't have it yourself if it is that good, you know? So that is strange. And that is where... What I'm doing, I, I, put, uh, I, I get different coatings. I have some cars here with different coatings. And I said, it's not what in my coating is the best coating in, in, in the world. It is not. It's just what I like. True. That's how it but, should be. Yeah. But what is it coating? And if you like the other coating, then we do the other coating. But, but that is how I work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's the same in Belgium, I guess, that um, when a customer comes to you, 
he don't ask for a brand, he asks just for coating. Or no. Yeah, just, I just like the ceramic coating. Yeah. He hear this <laughs> from his neighbor of his uh, friend, and, and I like to have a coating. But they never ask me about warranties, about how long, about things. I like to have a coating. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what but I, I explain. I explain almost what is a coating for. Yeah. yeah. And that is how it works. And I, but, and but I work what with is a bit of rain. Your preference is to apply coating on a car or do you prefer to wax a car? Your personal preference? Um, I still will be saying it is different for uh, the old timer and I, I will be say wax. But here at home, they like to have coating everywhere because it's easier to, mm -hmm. to wash after. Yes, because that was a, that is yeah. a very important feature about the coating. Uh, if you have an old timer, you like to work on the old timer, right? You like yeah. to wash it. You like to treat it like it's your baby. That's your hobby car. But if you have like a daily driver or a daily use car, a coating is in your favor, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it is, um, now more and more old timers uh, uh, ask for coding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They like to have this also uh, on the because it, it, it looks nice and it's easy to wash. And if you have a good coding, uh, that's very uh, uh, because if you have a good coding, um, they will warrant uh, and maybe they don't even warrant but i can tell you if you have a good coating there won't be any discoloration so if you have an old timer in red uh, which has been faded um, and you polish it back to high gloss shine and you put a coating on it it won't fade again that is something if you have a good coating i know there are some bad coatings on the market and you can buy them everywhere but if you buy good and solid coating you won't have discoloration and that yeah. is a good feature as well when it's when it comes down to old timers yeah, for sure. This is what I'm doing now. And I make also a promotion uh, for all time awards. Mm, okay. yeah. It's a good business, good industry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but awesome. you also do leather repair, Justina. Yeah. And that is Lars's area, of course. <laughs> yeah. um, so what is, what is the, 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 the percentage of business? What, what is it, the exterior or interior? Uh, what is the percentage? Is it like 80, 20, 50, 50? It still will be interior. And uh, a waxing, that is still at, at 80%. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe more, maybe more. Uh, now, the leather painting of leather repair, of how you like to say, uh, it's also started industry because because uh, you can you can put the color on the leather say you don't find the the red cows in the uh, yes of course you can but is something <laughs> there are no red cows yeah. i know there is a purple cow somewhere but there are no red cows <laughs> yeah but for people it's strange oh, you can do this or how you can do this uh and now i do the leather uh repair two years yeah two, two and a half uh, and in the old timer industry, it's uh, a nice, uh, uh, nice happening. Yeah, because that is, you can vouch for that, Lars, and maybe you can take over because uh, this is something that is still, because for me, leather repair is something that has been there always. But for the majority of people, they don't know what is possible with leather. No, they're surprised when I, sometimes I don't say this and I uh, make the little, uh, repair on the leather on the seat, uh, driver's seat, uh, and they are super happy. That it is something like, whoa, how is this possible? It, it no, is a nice industry. It is started. It tastes like also I like to do something more with the leather repair in Belgium for sure. So before and after, of course, is very, uh, yeah. very affected. But uh, Zus Belinti is also um, a big case in this um, uh, combination so um, to to keep something to refresh something to give him new life a new time for life um, that is also something that is what I'm saying I give them second life yeah second life so that is really um, I think especially at, at, at I mean this is something what is coming more and more up don't use um, one way 
caps for coffee, don't use too many plastic and, 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 um, um, reduce eating beef and all of these things. So um, this leather is already there. So, um, and you can restore it and you can restore it um, if you do it proper, um, really on a, on, a, on a very, very good level, what is OEM proof finally. And um, um, yeah, I mean, that is my passion. What can I? Yeah, but your passion and my passion was polishing, but this both together, if you like to be a real detailer, you need to both. Yeah. You need to have knowledge about both. Yeah. Uh, what I say, yeah. if you're a good detailer, because that's the experience I had. We didn't have time to educate ourselves into leather repair. So that's where we start looking for somebody who could, you know, so get yeah. the expert in because we don't want to disappoint the customer. This is also something what we see with some of the detailers here in the Netherlands, they uh, uh, wrapping and PPF are, are quite big. Yeah, but they're quite big over here. So, but if you can't do a PPF install, then have somebody do it for you. The customer has come to you and the customer asks you what is possible. We did that with, um, uh, how do you say that, paintless dent repair. Uh, we did that with leather. We did that with multiple jobs that weren't our expertise. This is where we hired the expert to do it for us, uh, to get a high-end end result. You know, So maybe you can't know it all, or maybe you're not in the position, because you're a very busy detailer, not in the position to go to a training. Get in touch with somebody who can. You know, join work forces. together. Huh? Work together. Yes, yeah. that is awesome because there are some very skilled people regarding uh, leather repair. Yeah, for sure. For me, it was this necessary? Uh, but this combination is so nice. Yeah, yeah, I, I can imagine because if I see results, and yesterday we spoke to uh, to Maki. And uh, I was looking at his Instagram page and I saw some of the leather repairs and remarkable, you know, so that yeah, was really Lucky, awesome. Lucky is on a very good level, eh? so. Um, awesome, yes, that is really on, awesome. He's on a very good, uh, on a very good repair level. He's um, doing this now for a couple of years. And, and he's like, a, when you talk about Maki advertising, he's like a sponge, eh? he's really, um, and he's, um, I don't know, he's, I sleep less, but he sleep more or less. Now. So because I get message from him in the middle of the night and then again early in the morning. And when he have idea, he just send it to me. And then it's um, sometimes um, sometimes you can't can't sleep. So people also to me also when you sleeping. Yeah. So 11 p.m. or two two in the morning is really not unnormal with Maki. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to know something so he's really um, a guy who, who wants to, to keep the knowledge and he did um, leather repair for a long long time and um, um, one thing back to, to vintage cars what I want to say is um, in the last um, more than five years I think um, a bit more than five years it comes more and more popular to keep everything original so um, to, to restore a car with um, a new leather, a new interior, a new carpet, is not so. Um, it's not anymore. This what people want because they say it is over restored and it doesn't fit to the age of the car. So um, it comes more and more that that, that uh, vintage car owners say, especially in Germany. Yeah. This is also what I see outside of Germany when I go to the Paris uh, car show, for example, in January or February. Is it mostly? I see more and more that the people say, oh. This mat leather and um, this history, tiny, yeah, but this, this matte leather doesn't fit to this car, so it, has to be, it needs a little bit um, a glossy, glossy, whatever, and um, the little bit glossy shine and a little bit patina and 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 and, and all of these things are possible um, to do with leather repair. Um, so you can keep um, the original. And um, you can bring it to a level that it looks um, that it was very uh, caring for this car in the last few years, um, or in the of the per, uh, lift period um, of the car, but it fits to the age of the car. So you have a very good solution, and this is what you can do with leather and plastic repair. You you can bring it to a 
you can keep the original, um, make it sustainability, and it fits to the whole car. So, and um, that is something that comes more and more um, in the interest of the of the, of the customer, the owner of vintage cars. We don't want that. You know, I mean, you can break down the whole car, do um, uh, um, rods, um, saving, paint it completely new. You know, you can do everything new, but then you have, um, then you kill the, you kill this special thing what the car normally has. You know, this. Uh, yeah, you kill. You, you're killing the character. Yeah, it's, it's character. Not. Yeah, the history, the character. You take it out. The feeling, the energy. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can keep the character when you when you do a restoring. Yeah, and um, yeah. I want to say also, I mean, when you when you buy a used house, you don't normally you don't break it down and build it new. Um, you restore it, no? So yeah, true. This is exactly. <laughs> so, but, uh, just give them the second life. Yeah, I give him the second. Yeah. Especially for vintage cars. Um, to the to the vintage car show in Brussels, um, for everybody who's never been there, it is um, it is a show where you can see a lot of luxury cars, um, in compared to other shows. Um, and you you will um, it is a good show for buying and selling cars. So yeah. it is less it is a less a product show. So in compared to, to Essen, for example, or Stuttgart, um, or also Paris, um, is um, in Belgium less products. So, um, but a lot of, but when you want to see special cars, cars in a good condition, um, then is um, Brussels for sure um, a very good show. Um, and I talk about vintage car shows. I have also to say that the Paris show is for my point, you know, it's not in Belgium, but the Paris show in February is um, the most beautiful vintage car show. So, but um, I hear about yeah, yeah. But um, Belgium is, um, is so. I just want to say so when you are looking for products and you're looking for um, 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 auto parts or something like this, then you are wrong in Brussels. Um, but when you want to see um, cars in a good condition, you want to see cars they are raw on the market then you are right in person so when you want to see special cars in a good good condition then you're welcome to go there because um, that is what you get there for sure i don't know where are all the rich people in belgium but you the coast you have for sure because yes. when you see the show which kind of cars are there it's uh, unbelievable it's unbelievable also in, in netherlands yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they are. You have, a lot of, you have a lot of because in Belgium you have the coastal area, which is quite expensive to live, and that's where I think uh, the majority. And of course, in the bigger cities like Antwerp and where you are, um, yeah. uh, that's that's where the majority of the the, the wealthy people live. So yes, yeah, so yeah, they yeah, have like extreme. Is there enough job uh, in Belgium? Sorry, is there enough job in Belgium? Enough cars for everybody. <laughs> True again, true again, you know, yeah. so, but uh, people need to know that you, people that like you are there. Yeah. But we, we are working on that and, and you are working on that. So that is, that is, yeah. that is really awesome. And um, um, what is your, if, if I ask you, where is Justina in, in five years? Where do you see yourself in five years? It was the question what I, uh, what I was thinking, I think, Last week, I was sitting in my garage, uh, looking to my GB, and I was asking GB what I can do with him, what, where, where are we going uh, in five years? What mm -hmm. will be? Yeah, I don't, I don't have idea. Uh, what I like uh, is, of course, do just what I'm doing now. So you're well, comfortable with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just just doing what I'm doing, traveling, trainings, uh, and I hope uh, uh, my bag uh, and I can detail the cars for the uh, next five years. Yeah, no, no more uh, different. Yeah, just the same, but with more people, better trainings, uh, uh, things, more groups, more teams, uh, like like this. Okay, we nearly. Uh,
one hour or we are over one hour now so we're we over one hour to get ah. it's very good finally words um i think this is a goal to to be in a situation that you can say um maybe small things of course but mainly i'm happy with it what i have now and i just want to keep it and go with this forward um is um a lucky situation so um very very congratulations that you get to this point um i'm happy to can say this by myself also and i know patrick you are we are happy people <laughs> yes. we are happy people yeah <laughs> so come to the come to the um detailing leather restoring business and you will be a happy people <laughs> yeah, we are happy people. We don't sleep too much, but we are happy. <laughs> but that's a good thing, you know. So, and and that's the majority of people in the detailing industry. The majority likes what they do, you know. So, and I yeah. think in life, it's very important that you are able. And like Lars is saying, we are lucky to uh, do what we are doing. And yeah, uh, do what you people. like, and you never walk. It doesn't feel like work and I, I, I think it doesn't because if it would feel like work for Lars the way he is traveling last year um, then he would say okay let's stop this you know so I'm not going to do this you have to be like very committed passionate and 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 I think for the three of us and and the people we interviewed prior we love what we are doing so uh, we are blessed I think yeah. I'm very thankful about it. Yes, so so are we. Yeah. Okay, so um, Justina, thank you very very much to doing this twice. <laughs> <laughs> Was pleasure. The, the recording um, is still running, so um, we had between a little bit connecting um, problems with the Wi-Fi, but um, it was not too worse. So um, yeah, works very very well. And um, interesting your your way um, for, um, for me and also how the situation is in Belgium. I'm lucky to hear that um, a community is starting. That is always what 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 Patrick and me um, want. So this is yeah, one of the main idea of, of this podcast why we do this and um, bring people to each other, learn from each other. This what we're doing, nice brands, nice people together, that makes stronger, makes bigger, makes a community. True. That's what we need. We can do this in the US, we can do this in Europe for sure. Because that's yeah, true, because we, Lars and I and you, uh, uh, we, we all know that in the US, this is a common thing, you know, so, uh, and in Europe, it's more everybody to, to themselves. And this is something that we, especially with this podcast, is, are trying to change, you know, so... Also, if you are interested in listening right now to this podcast and you're a detailer or in the detailing industry, uh, send in a request and, and we might have you on the podcast as well. Share your experience. Yeah, everybody's welcome. Let the comments down. Um, go in touch with Justina, with Patrick or me. And um, yeah, see you by the next episode. Thanks again, Justina. Thanks again, Patrick. This and uh, yeah. Um, if you Thank are, you. Yeah. Then I will stop the recording. <laughs> you still, still recording? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I want to thank you, Justina, for being on the show. Um, uh, like Lars said twice, uh, I want to ask the people who are watching, listening, uh, to like and subscribe. Um, will really support us, and uh, I hope you support the channel and uh, like the idea that we try to bring the detailing community together. Yeah, uh, that's the idea of the podcast. So. That's it for me. Thank you, Justine. for the next five years. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Well, yeah, maybe, maybe sooner, but otherwise in five years. Yeah. Otherwise in five years. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.